everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we'll be doing my main releases. Let's get going. There are some pretty good main releases as far as I can tell on my good reads. So I think they're really exciting and I'm excited to read them. So let's get going. So my first book is Hedda by Jennifer Say. It will come out on May 23rd. When Hedda, immortal goddess and daughter of the ancient titan Kronos, helps her brother Zeus to overthrow the tyrannical father, she dreams of ruling at his side. As they establish their reign on Mount Olympus, Hedda suspects that Zeus might be just as ruthless and cruel as the father they betrayed. She was always born to rule, but, she, but must she lose herself in perpetuating the cycle of violence and cruelty? Or if she can find a way to forge a better world? Oh, I, love, I actually love her uh, Atalanta. I thought that was great, so I'm excited to read more of her uh, Greek mythology books. My next book is The Medicine Woman of Galveston by Amanda Skinnendor. It will come out on May 21st. Caught in the great Galveston hurricane of, of 1900, a female doctor who has joined a traveling medicine show to support her disabled son is forced to weather the storm in its aftermath in a town hostile to the troops' unconventional ways, but desperate for their help. Once a trailblazer in the field of medicine, Dr. Teresa Hathaway has attached a scalpel or thin skull since she made a fatal mistake in the operating theater. Instead, she works in a corset factory, striving to earn enough to support her disabled son. But even then, the lively heart is threatened, and Teresa is left with one option, to join a really charismatic Magnetic showman named Huey and become part of his traveling medicine show. Her medical license lends the show a pretense of credibility, but the curses and tonics to she is forced to pedal a little more than purgatives and bathwater, loathing the duplicity even as she finds uneasy kinship with the other misfit performers. Tushi vows to leave as soon as her beds are paid and start a new life with her son, if Huey will ever let her go. My next book is In the Shallows by Tanya Burn. It will come out on May 21st. On New Year's Day, three fishermen haul a teenager on the very ocean. By the time they bring her to land, it's clear that she doesn't know where or who she is. Her story goes viral. The media calls her Nicoletta after the fisherman's boat. The rumors take a dark turn the next time the fishermen head up to sea and fail to return. People say Nicoletta lured them to their deaths, their lives in exchange for hers. And with that, the mystery becomes a legend. Eighteen months later, Mara Malakar meets Nicoletta or Nico at the cafe. The two become fast friends, but as Mara realizes she wants more from the relationship, Nico remains oblivious, focused only on remembering. She may not want to, though. Could there be a reason she's locked everything behind a door? And once she's brave enough to open it, what will happen to her and to them? My next book is A Queen Among Wolves by June Hood. It will come out on May 14. And she's the author of The Red Palace, which I loved. Uh, Hope is dangerous, love is deadly. 1506 Jusion. The people suffer under the cruel reign of the Tyler King Yerosan, powerless to stop him from commanding the land for his recreational use, banning and burning books, and kidnapping and horrifically abusing women and girls as his personal playthings. Seventeen-year-old Isabel has lived a sheltered, privileged life despite the kingdom's turmoil. When her sis older sister Suyon becomes the king's latest prey, Isabel leaves the relative safety of her village, traveling through a forbidden territory to reach her capital in hopes of stealing her sister back. But she soon discovers the king's power is absolute, and to challenge his rule is to court certain death. Prince Daeyun has lived his whole life in the terrifying shadow of his despicable half-brother, the king. Forced to watch King Yeon son flaunt his penetration through executions and rampant abuse of the common folk, Daeyun aches ang to find a way to dethrone his half-brother once and for all. When a staging a coup fail, failure is fatal, and he'll need help to pull it off, but there's no way to know who he can trust. That sounds so good, I'm really excited for it. My next book is It Waits in the Forest by Sana Das. It will come out on May 14. Unlike the other residents of the small Caribbean island of St. Virgil, Selena da Silva does not believe in magic. With a lo logical mind and a knack for botany, Selena used the dream of leaving the island to study pharmacology until a vicious unsolved attack left her father dead and her mother in a coma. Now her guilt over her mother's condition keeps her thrown on to the island, relegated to a conning of gullible tourists with useless talismans and phony protection rituals. 
But when one of those tortoises ends up at the center of a string of strange murders, the truth that Selena has been denied can no longer be that it is evil lurking in the forest that surround St. Virgil. Another thing that can't be avoided? Selena's ex-boyfriend Gabriel newly employed at the local newspaper and eager to put his investigative skills to use. Desperate to put an end to the killings and claim justice for Selena's family, these two former lovers wish to find answers, but even by its time. And his long buried feelings and long hidden secrets about Selena's family past begin to reveal themselves, only one answer remains, and it waits in the forest. Mm, that sounds so ominous. My next book is The Temptation of Magic by Megan Scott, it will come out on May 23rd. As an embryo, Nicole has the ability to kill any deadly supernatural, but if her power ever awakened, the wake, the organization that governs supernaturals, would force her to be the loyal huntress, or kill her like they did her mother. The stage thief, Nicole Hitt, hides in a small university town, convinced of a mythological art co a collection that the local manor contains a final message from her mother. But before she can study it, Kaya McCarter, the wink's most skilled embryo, arrives on his own hunt. When they discover his prey has stolen the painting for leverage, they are forced to work together. As the creature threatens to expose Nicole's powers, her tenuous alliance with Kian threatens her heart. If her true identity is revealed, Kian will hunt her next. No one does the base the wake and survives. Especially when the art of the staking and me as a conspiracy that will change the lives of creatures and humans forever. My next book is The Shape and Dragon's Breath by Monocreal Black Goose. It will come out on May 9th. The remote island of Ma Masqua Pong has not seen a dragon many generations. After 15 year old Anukis find a dragon's egg and bonds with its hatchling, her people are delighted, for all remember the tales of the days when dragons lived in Morgadon and danced away the storms of autumn, enabling the people to thrive. To them, Anukis is reversed as an ambush he visit, a person in a unique relationship with the dragon. Unfortunately for Anukis, the English conquerors of the land have different opinions. They have a very specific idea of how a dragon should be raised and who should be doing the raising, and Anchorage does not meet any of the requirements. Only with great reluctance do they allow Anchorage to enroll in a proper English dragon school on the mainland. If she cannot succeed there, her dragon will be killed. For a girl with no formal schooling, a non-English upbringing, and a very different understanding of the history of her land, challenges are bound, both socially and academically, but Anchorage is smart, determined, and resolved to learn what she needs to help her dragon even if it means teaching herself. The one thing she refuses to do, however, is become the meek English miss that everyone expects. And it sounds like a really good dragon story, so I'm here for it. My next book is Goddess of the Miller by Rashi Nami Patil. It will come out on May 21st. A mother and a son, a goddess and a prince, a curse and an oath, a river whose course will change the fate of the world. Ganga, a joyful goddess of the river, serves as caretaker to the mysterious godlings who roam her banks. But when their antics incur the wrath of a powerful sage, Ganga is cursed to become mortal, bound to her human form, and that she fulfills the obligations of the curse. Though she knows nothing of mortal life, Ganga wins King Shantanu and becomes a queen, determined to regain her freedom no matter the cost. But in a cruel turn of fate, just as she is freed of her binding, she is forced to leave her infant son behind. Her son, Prince Devavrati, Devavrata, unwittingly carries the legacy of Ganga's curse, and when he makes an oath that he will never claim his father's throne, he sets in motion chains events that will end in a terrible and tragic war. So this is a retelling of Ganga, of the goddess of the river, and her doomed immortal son. My next book is No Blooded by Emma Sterner Radley. It will come out on May 9th. Valor and Patriot has are three members of the Order of Axton, an assassin's guild tasked with keeping order in a rough city of Winterstock. Plucked from the streets as children, raised to compete for the guild's approval, Valor uses her bronze to survive, while Petricor strives to be a gentleman assassin. When then given the biggest job yet to kill Ben Christ, the mysterious leader of the city's illegal magic trade, it's a recipe for a disaster if they can quell the rivalry lock enough. The reward will be enough to settle the debts with the order and start new lives. If this job wasn't dangerous enough, while Lord is silent when protecting the Astrocat, Ingrid with the dying, 
Fowl and Vine spontaneously attract him, but Petrol can't wait to be rid of them both. He begrudgingly accepts Ingrid's knowledge and connections as they navigate the city's criminal underbelly in pursuit of Bud the Christ. As secrets bow bow to the surface, the duo must outwit the thugs on the tail, keep Ingrid alive, and harness the ball work together without murdering each other. That sounds like a plan that can go wrong in so many ways. <laughs> and but it sounds fun though, right? What can go wrong? My next book is The Wishing Game by Meg Schaffer. It will come out on May 30th. Make a wish. Lucy Hart knows better than anyone what so like to grow up without parents and who loved her. In a childhood marked by neglect and loneliness, Lu Lucy found her soul as in books, namely the Clock Island series by Jack Masterson. Now a 26 year old teacher's age, she is able to share her love of reading with bright young students, especially 7 year old Christopher Lamb, who was left orphan after the tragic death of his parents. Lucy would give anything to adopt Christopher, but even the idea of becoming a family seems like an impossible dream without proper friends and stability. Be careful what you wish for. Just when Lucy is about to give up, Jack Madison announces his finally announces he's finally written a new book. Even better, he's holding a contest at his home on the real clock island. And Lucy is one of the four lucky contestants chosen to compete to win the one and only copy. That reminds me of the Caravelle trilogy, which that whole trilogy was a mess. I hated it. Even though Caravelle was seems to be okay, but I just couldn't continue to read the, the finale. <laughs> but yeah, that's what really reminds me of. I hope it's better than Caravelle. <laughs> and my last book is The Honey Ridge by Sydney J. Shields and will come out on May 14. 21-year-old Madden Gold Claude has always preferred the company of the spirits of the meadow to any of the suitors who have tried to rule her. So when her grandmother must go her way to the family cottage on the tiny isle of Innisfree, Innisfree with an offer to train her as the next honey witch, she accepts immediately. But her newfound magic and independence come with a no one can fall in love with the honey witch. When Martin Bucky, a notorious and grumpy skeptic who doesn't believe in magic, shows up on her doorstep, Marigold can't resist the challenge to prove her that magic is real, but soon Marigold begins to care for Wadi in ways she never expected. And when darker magic awakens and threatens to destroy her home, she must fight for much more than her new home, at the risk of losing her magic and her heart. So that seems like a cozy fantasy read. I hope it's better than Emily's Wild Encyclopedia Fairies, because I did not enjoy that one at all. So I'm hoping this one will work better. But uh, those are all my main releases of this year. Let me know what you're excited for and please like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!